Good afternoon, Southeast Texas. Another day of waiting and watching for vote totals in Pennsylvania, Georgia, North Carolina, Arizona, and Nevada. Right now, ballots still being processed and counted in those states. And as they are, protesters continue calling for action. Overnight, there were protests happening all across the nation in downtown Phoenix. Dozens of people gathering around the county's election office. At one point, some of the protesters attempted to get inside of the elections building. Meanwhile, in Nevada, protesters held rallies outside the elections department while ballot counting was taking place. Supporters from both political parties joining in. Officials say the state is still too close to call. We continue our team coverage now of the election with Jay Gray, who has the very latest from the White House as the vote counting process continues to come in very slowly. With counting and the courts now framing this election, officials in states still too close to call are urging patience. We're trying to make sure that every ballot is counted. But with the race for the White House slowing to a crawl, every vote counts. frustration is building on both sides of the ballot. Unless the people stand up and make it clear that every vote has to count, the election will be stolen. Without providing any evidence, online President Trump continues to allege fraud and cheating in several states, Twitter flagging at least one of the posts as disputed and possibly misleading. The president also ramping up fundraising efforts, texting and emailing supporters money the campaign will apparently use for ongoing legal challenges. In a written statement, the Biden campaign calls the litigation and recount strategy pathetic. The former vice president telling supporters he's confident as the process slowly unfolds. We're winning enough states to reach 270 electoral votes needed to win the presidency. I'm not here to declare that we've won, but I am here to report when the count is finished, we believe we will be the winners. Though it's still not exactly clear when that count will be finished. In fact, election officials in some states say they won't have the complete results until maybe sometime next week. Jay Gray, NBC News, the White House. One of the most contested states during this election was the state of Wisconsin. Many people making claims about the vote counting there as well. And our Jason Puckett here now to verify those claims. Both Eric Trump and Donald Trump Jr. shared this same claim. It shows Wisconsin voter turnout in the last five elections, ranging from 67 to 73 percent. But this year, the claim shows it at 89 percent, then adds, quote, they're stealing this. Now, the basic claim here is that Wisconsin has never seen anywhere near 89 percent turnout, so it's got to be a sign that these results are fake, right? Wrong. This claim is false, and it all comes down to simple math. We looked at voter turnout data from Wisconsin. The first five years in the claim are accurate, but the 2020 number is way off. Follow the math here. To get to that 89% number, the claim takes the current votes, that's roughly 3.2 million, and divides them by the registered voters in Wisconsin, roughly 3.7 million. That gets you about 89 to 90%. But that's not how Wisconsin does it. They clearly state on their site that, quote, Wisconsin does not calculate turnout based on the number of registered voters. Instead, they use total voting age population. That's just anyone in the state above the age of 18. That number in 2020 is about 4.5 million people. Okay, a lot of numbers. Stick with me. Let's run that math again. Total votes are the same, 3.2 million, but we swap that bottom number. Now we divide that by 4.5 million which gets you about 71% voter turnout. That's much closer to the other elections in the claim. Bottom line, Wisconsin formula tells us voter turnout is actually around 71% this year, not 89%. This claim is false. This claim has gone viral, saying Wisconsin has more votes than people who are registered to vote. The Post calls this, quote, direct evidence of fraud. But is this true? We checked with the Wisconsin Elections Commission, and the answer is no. 
Right now, Wisconsin is reporting roughly 3.2 million votes. And as of Monday, they had 3,684,726 registered voters. Wisconsin also allows voters to register on election day, meaning their number of registered voters was likely higher than that on Tuesday. So this claim is downright false. Wisconsin has not reported more votes than registered voters. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. And if you have something you'd like us to verify, you can send us a message to verify at 12newsnow.com. Let's take a look outside now. It's a beautiful, beautiful afternoon out there right now, and we are ready to get an update on the forecast with Jeff Gerber in our Storm Tracker Center. We love these days, Jeff. I know, and uh, looking pretty good out there. Temperatures into the 70s. We'll stay in the 70s for this afternoon. Let's again, let's go back outside, and you can see sky starting to clear a little bit here in the Beaumont area. We had the weak disturbance go by in the upper atmosphere this morning, creating some clouds, but now starting to clear out. We expect to see lots of sunshine through the afternoon, and temperatures into the uh, middle to upper 70s as we go in through this afternoon. So looking pretty nice. Humidity has started to creep back, though. We're going to show you uh, humidity levels here at the noon hour. We'll show you the forecast over the next seven days, which does not include much of a rain chance. We do see one uh, next week, but until then, looks like it's going to be pretty dry. We'll have that for you in just a little bit. Well, of course, the election has taken center stage this week, but it's important to not lose sight of what's happening with the pandemic as well. In fact, experts say it's only a matter of time before we start to shatter some of the records. Daunting milestones, 100,000 cases in a single day, they say. Miguel Almaguer with more as the virus refuses to take a break for politics. As the focus on battleground states intensifies, one of the election's essential issues is tightening its grip, a deadly coronavirus surge being met with dire warnings. For us, this is the highest volumes uh, that we've seen throughout this pandemic. For the first time, the U.S. surpassing 100,000 new COVID cases in a single day. According to the Washington Post, 17 states reporting record numbers of hospitalizations. Among them, swing states like Iowa, Ohio, and Minnesota, where millions turned out to vote in person. But the spread of the virus at polling places was not a major concern, say experts. On Wednesday in El Paso, Texas, a record 3,100 new infections. Hospitals there now at or near capacity. Doctors and nurses working around the clock to stop the spread. We cannot afford to lose any more lives. In Indiana, 20-year-old college student Bethany Nesbitt died in her dorm room of a pulmonary embolism after testing positive for the virus, the coroner citing COVID-19 as a contributing factor in her death. In a statement, Nesbitt's family writing in part, this loss is forever. We plead with you to take this virus seriously. It is a pain that I can't even begin to describe. Jennifer Seidlick Padana lost her parents to the coronavirus in April. They were married for nearly 50 years and died within days of each other. I never thought that, you know, this, these holidays that are coming up, that I would be spending them without my parents. That statement shared by many around the world as a second wave of infection sweeps through Europe. Italy, Greece and England are among countries issuing partial or total lockdowns again. This London hair salon busy ahead of today's shutdown. Restaurants, gyms and non-essential shops in England are now closed for four weeks. Measures that experts hope will help the region grapple with the latest outbreak. Developing in Port Arthur now, a shooting has left one person dead and another in the hospital. The incident happened near the cross streets of Davis and FM 365 last night. When Port Arthur police arrived, they say they're on the scene shortly after 715. They found the deceased, Bria McZeal, and a male victim. They'd both been shot. The two were taken to the hospital where McZeal was pronounced dead. The male victim is expected to be okay. So far, no arrests have been made and the investigation is ongoing. The teenage driver who was behind the wheel of this car that crashed into and killed Beaumont police officer Sheena Yarbrough Powell has been indicted by a Jefferson County grand jury. 18-year-old Luis Torres is now facing felony charges 
for the August wreck that happened on Cardinal Drive. Torres' blood alcohol content at the time was more than three times the legal limit. The grand jury indicting him on charges of intoxication manslaughter, causing the death of a peace officer and intoxication assault on a peace officer. Officer Gabriel Fells was injured in the crash as well, but has since recovered. Meanwhile, in North Beaumont, a woman attempting to cross these railroad tracks was hit and killed by a train. It happened just before lunchtime Wednesday along the tracks north of I-10 and 7th Street. Officers say 39-year-old Tina Marie Celestine had already died when they arrived on the scene. That investigation into exactly what happened there is still ongoing. Also happening in Beaumont, a man killed in an officer-involved shooting. Jefferson County Sheriff's deputies responded to a family disturbance yesterday afternoon on Carpenter Road. Texas State Troopers say 59-year-old John Seymour barricaded himself inside the trailer as officers tried to negotiate with him for hours. He refused to surrender and instead came out of the trailer pointing a handgun at officers. That's when he was shot. He later died at the hospital.